So what I did was I, I figured out if I did custom homes, I could probably get a cash flow, pay for my, uh, pay my interest payments, and get back on my feet. I, in fact, I did that, and about a couple years later, I started building spec houses again. Uh, I'm a sucker for building spec houses. I'm still doing it. It's fun, even though I have one on the market now that's been there for about six months and it's killing me. Oh, that's broke. Literally, literally broke. As a matter of fact, I had an appointment with a, an attorney to figure out how I was going to file Chapter 11. But that's when the custom project started and the cash flow started and I paid off my loans and the houses sold and, you know. Why, what's different about a custom why did that work um, it's twice as much work and half the profit. Uh, a custom work is, is pretty much a guaranteed cash flow. So if, you're, if somebody hires you to build a house, you're going to negotiate either a fixed cost where you figure it's going to be, say, $200,000 to do it, and you're going to wind up making whatever you think is you should, 15%, 20%. So that way, if you do your numbers right, then you get a guaranteed cash flow. Um, in a new house, I, I used to do 15% when I did custom houses, and, and that was pretty good. And I did it on a cost plus, and they're great if you can get them. So you know that you know that your cash flow it will be positive. And that's because they pay their bill. They pay all yeah, hopefully the they pay. I had one guy I had, to, I had a suit to get the final payment, and he was an attorney, which is a pain in the neck. But get into how I how I figure out a project. It's. Uh, I don't have a business plan. I told a story before uh, that a couple guys, we went out to California, or Colorado to the mountains to take a look at it, uh, buying some land out there to do a project. And we went about and saw five or six development sites. We went to a, a restaurant, sat down and literally took a bar napkin, wrote the numbers out on it, and we said, okay, we're gonna do this project. So I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I think you wanna have a better business plan, know what your costs going in are, what the downsides are, but uh, uh, I've been doing it so long that that's about how I, I look at it now. If I see something, I look at a, a property and I can tell pretty quickly if it's going to make sense or not. What I do is I go from acquisition cost, so whether it's a, a house that I'm going to renovate, a house that I'm going to tear down, or a vacant lot, and then I figure out how much I'm going to put into it. And building's pretty straightforward. It comes out um, cost per square foot on whatever you're doing, whatever part of the project it is, whether it's digging the foundation, the concrete, the framing, they're all cost per square foot. And then depending on the area you're in, you can wind up selling your house for X amount of dollars per square foot. The, I don't know where you guys are going back to, but the Washington area is an aberration. It's, it's really high and the numbers are a little bit crazy. We're one of the highest real estate uh, costs in the area, in the country. But anyway, um, I look at the acquisition costs, I look at what I estimate my hard costs to be, which are the costs to actually put the bricks and sticks together to make it a finished product, and then the soft costs, which would be the architect, the interest, the engineering, and any other miscellaneous I forget. And it's a successful project if when I settle on the house I get more money than I had in uh, I, I buy it and I figure when I sell it, if I can get 15% net profit, I don't do any of the complicated trans or calculations where I want to discount a cash flow or whatever. But if I if I sell it for a million bucks, I want to make $150,000 because it's not worth the risk for me to sign on a loan for six eight hundred thousand dollars or whatever it happens to be if I'm not going to make that amount of money. And as it turns out, it's usually a little bit less. Ten's good, fifteen's pretty good, twenty's really good. What's your background in engineering? I have a chemical engineering undergraduate. Okay. So it's not really applicable to no. the building. I, I guess what it did was it, it enabled me to take a look at a set of plans and, and understand it as opposed to going in cold on that. He okay. wanted to know about, about financing. Um, initially, I used to put on a suit and go to the bank and say, would you please loan me money? I probably didn't have enough money to justify getting the loans that I was. But after the downturn in the market in 90, um, I went to a bank and uh, established a relationship with a banker that all I do now is I send him, I call him on the phone, tell him I have a deal, this is what I want to do, this is what it's going to sell for. He says, okay. Uh, he brings it to the board. They um, 
they approve it verbally. He said, okay, send me an email, and I give him a breakdown on the numbers, and he says, okay, and I get a commitment letter. It's not that easy for first-time people getting a loan. Um, banks are probably going to be your best uh, source of funds. However, uh, occasionally I've had friends invest in my business, and since they've done well, they continue doing it when I ask them if they want to. But a bank is going to be probably your best source. Um, construction loans, which I know best, they range anywhere from 4 to 6 percent and you pay anywhere from a half to a point and a half on that. That means if you're going to get a million dollar loan and you pay a point, that's ten thousand dollars. I'm building a house for myself now and I bought a house, I tore it down, dug the hole, put the foundation in, <laughs> built the structure and finishing it out. And if it weren't for me to live in, I would be putting it on the market for a certain amount of money. I have been known to do renovations. Um, I just, a, a friend called me and wanted to do a renovation on a condo, and I said, sure, I'll help you. And it started out that we were going to do about a $125,000 uh, budget, but they brought a decorator in and it, uh, it more than doubled. <laughs> Banks want approximately 20% equity in the, in the project. So um, if it's going to be... Let's see, how does it work? If I'm going to buy a, a house for $750, i am doing the numbers on my house. Um, I had to put $150, yeah, I put $150 in plus closing costs. So they wanted 20% of the acquisition, and then they financed the construction part. Um, I'm a deal junkie, so whenever a deal comes up, uh, I'll look at it, and if I think I can make money at it, I'll probably do it. I, I bought a tract of land. <laughs> Uh, the late 90s and we developed it into 13 lots and we sold the 13 lots so yes if you have a specific question about that that's a pretty lengthy process I think it took us two years to get from acquisition to actually selling just the lots okay. we didn't want to develop yeah, you probably we, subdivided it yourself yeah I mean we hired an attorney to go through the subdivision process but yes that's what we did and the, the next development of that would be to actually build the build a house on it but you're looking at carrying a piece of ground for probably four years from the time you buy it until the time you sell the houses we didn't we didn't want to be in it that long I also did a condo project which I would those are the most difficult um, it was 30 35 condos and 10 buildings and it took uh, about a year and a half to finish it, and it took another two years to sell them all. And those, those tend to be very lengthy processes. And I, I gave a tour of my house to somebody that was in development, building houses, and I said, oh, those are the files from my condo project. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, you got sued. And that's typically what happens at the end of a, a, a deal when you're doing condos. I built a house in the early 90s, and it had a retaining wall, for the backyard so that the basement was a walkout. And I can't remember if it was 17 or 18 years later, but we got a call from the homeowner and said, my retaining wall is cracking. And went over there and said, uh, did we give you the 30 or 50 year warranty? Typically we give people a one year unlimited warranty and whatever goes wrong, we'll fix it. So went over there and said, you know, we really, you know, and, and, oh, and what they had done was they built up the, uh, the backyard about another three or four feet and then put an additional row of brick on top of it. So it caused the, uh, the retaining wall to buckle. So anyway, we back and we worked out something that everybody was happy. We split the cost and it wound up being it. But it's right in the, in the area that I trade in regularly. And for me to spend an extra couple thousand dollars to have them not say bad things or not to spend a couple thousand dollars and have them say bad things about me, it wasn't worth it. So. Um, I just, I, I would rather eat it and, and just say, okay, fine, we'll do it.